Okay, all right, we've already got a comment before we even started, Philippe. We're live at uh, the Notre Dame Cathedral. Cindy Green says Chicago is watching. That's a good sign. This is uh, Philippe from Secret Journeys. Bonjour. Now, if anyone just watched us over on uh, uh, Facebook, this isn't the same man that I was standing with 10 seconds ago. Perhaps you can introduce yourself. Sure. So I'm Philippe Hertzberg and I'm the founder of Secret Journeys. Uh, what Secret Journeys is, is it really experiences, special experiences uh, that offer private access, encounters, and really unforgettable moments. And we have about 10 experiences. One of them is Notre Dame Cathedral. We and should show this beautiful Notre Dame because <laughs> as lovely as our faces might be, Philippe, yeah. oh, what are we showing <laughs> ourselves for? So, uh, so you guys who've listened to the podcast, wow, it really is dazzling right there. It is. Uh, Kim Kardashian is apparently watching, judging by the <laughs> name that just <laughs> popped up. Um, but you guys that listen to the podcast, and I hope that's all 20 of you who are watching right now. Uh, we were talking, Leah and I were talking about you in the episode, calling you the Wizard of Paris. How did you earn that moniker that you didn't even know you had? Well, thank you for that. Uh, well, actually, it's really what we do is we, we co-create. You know what? Hang on. I'm going to yes. film you so that I can yeah, show that okay. in the background. I'm not going to be on it because the view's just too good. Yeah. Go on. I'm going to film from low. Yeah. So what, what we do, what we do is uh, we co-create these uh, these experiences with the landmarks, with the locations, and with the people. So we actually spent many, many weeks and months speaking to Notre Dame, explaining who we are, what we do, and really saying this is this is why we want to do this, and this is what it could bring you, and this is what it can bring the world. And so the secret tour specifically that you do in this building that I'm uh, showing now is that you go in there Tuesdays after all the tourists so are gone, basically. Yeah, every Tuesday evening there's uh, usually a concert, and so at 7 p.m. the cathedral is empty, empty. So and uh, we actually walk in, and I'll let Quentin, our storyteller, historian, show you the path, but we walk in, and uh, you're for one hour and a half alone, uh, on your own, inside the cathedral. Wow. There's special moments inside. I won't tell you everything. That's sort of secret. Well, I'm going to go and check it out next week, so uh, yes, you're, I'm, you're, I'm excited you're about that. Next week. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, people, I think people are trying to get in on the camera and not realizing which direction we're filming. I'm seeing a lot of comments, people giving us bonjours and bonsoirs from bonjour, all over the world. Bonjour. Hello, uh, Hello to everyone. Um, but so the idea now is you're going to introduce me to yes. uh, one of your historians. Exactly. And guides. Exactly. We, we, well, many of our experiences are with journalists and sometimes we work with uh, historians. I'm going to introduce you to Quentin. Actually, Quentin is right here. There he is. And we were very lucky to find Quentin because Quentin actually has many of the keys Hi that you need. Hello, Quentin. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the Eiffel Tower, Quentin. <laughs> the Eiffel Tower, you sure? And uh, bonsoir to everybody that's watching bonsoir. live at home. So I'm going to leave you with Quentin. Quentin has amazing stories. We actually worked together on creating an, an amazing experience of the cathedral. And Quentin has worked in the cathedral for many years and he knows everyone there and he knows the landmark like no one else. And so. he's promised that he knows at least 20 things that none of you guys know. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> at, at least. At least 20. Okay. <laughs> so have a wonderful time everyone with Quentin and I'll see you soon. I'll see you next uh, week. And one comment is coming from Claudine Hemingway who's doing one of your secret tours in May, she says. So okay. you've got someone watching. Uh, but thank you for, uh, for sure. the introduction. Feel free to take a picture of us as we walk off. Something I can Hello. share with you guys later. Um, some paparazzi. Okay. Au revoir. Au revoir tout le monde. Bye-bye. I want to see you on my podcast soon. Yeah, the Wizard too. of Paris. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay, now it's just us. Just uh, us. Now we can... Uh, so what I'm going to do is turn the camera around. Okay, so I'll show you what's going on. Um, everybody say hello to Quentin, and that's uh, spelled like Quentin in English, right? Yeah, exactly, like the movie director, Quentin Tarantino. Right, Quentin Tarantino, without much, all the violence. Much, yeah, much less tough. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the, uh, I'm just, I see people are tuning in here on the top left, it says 25 people are watching. Okay. Let us know if you can or can't hear us, and we'll speak louder if need yeah, be, yeah. everybody. And uh, maybe if you stand there, sure. and you can tell me, what we're going to do and where we're going to walk and then start getting into some of the facts. Are we going to go that way or tell me what we're going to do? We're going to introduce yourself into Notre Dame. We're going to visit little by little and have an overview of the, of the, of the cathedral and of its facade mainly, uh, which is already a bunch of work and already a lot of story, a lot that you may ignore. But Notre Dame, for example, is one of the oldest Gothic 
So, I mean, how old are we talking? How if if I ask you questions, are you going to be able to answer everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so, you guys, this is a uh, previously unobtainable position on my YouTube channel. You can ask anything, uh, uh, and uh, Quentin will answer. Someone's written that they can't hear, but someone also wrote, "I can hear everything." So we'll okay. just speak louder, just to be I'll safe. Try, yeah. Um, I'll try my best to speak as loud as I can. Okay, so first question is when is this, uh, when was it completed, this building? So Notre Dame was first, they started to build it in 1163, which means that we celebrated a few years ago its 850th anniversary, and today would be 856th anniversary. I'm not good in math, but... 856. Uh, of course, when we talk about this anniversary, it's not the entire building. As you can imagine, building up in the late 12th century, uh, buildings such as Notre Dame would take a long time. And in French, there is an expression. When something is taking you a long time to do, you say that it took you 107 years to do this all came from the construction of Notre Dame because the Persians in the early 13th century were complaining that Notre Dame was taking too long. They were expecting to finish the entire construction 107 years later. Ah, so because of that... Uh, because of that, a French expression came up. So let's walk a bit closer. Someone's commented that uh, your voice is quieter than mine. So here's where the okay. mic is. We'll try and keep you close to it. Sure. Uh, and we'll be yelling a little bit to the people. But um, I'll show this, uh, this sort of facade bit and maybe you can tell me what we're looking at and I'll keep this mic close to you. Fine, fine. Uh, actually, right now, we got uh, more focused on some details of the main portals. And this one is the central portal of Notre Dame, the one which is called the Last Judgment portal. It was uh, finished and sculpted in the early 13th century, the year 1210, 1220s approximately. And it depicts us the story of Jesus, the story of the Bible, of course, and the story of mankind according to uh, the theology of the medieval times. So and does that mean these are the 12 uh, uh, disciples, you apostles? Exactly, yeah. you just have to count them down and That's you what can I did. <laughs> see already that we have 12 men, 12 apostles surrounding Jesus in the middle, in between the two doors. Should I zoom in on any of them in particular? Well, you can zoom in on St. Peter, that I'm sure a lot of people are going to be able to recognize him. Uh -huh. He carries two keys, the two keys to heaven. Let's walk over to St. Peter. So the sound thing is sorted. As long as you stand close to me, everyone can hear you. But when you're Wonderful. in front, they can't hear you so much. So we'll just keep you close to my arm here. Sure. There's St. Peter. On YouTube, the zoom function is excellent. Yeah. There he is, next to uh, one of his mates. Yeah, you can guess who he is also. He's the only one who's not carrying a beer. <laughs> who, who is it then? The, the, um, the youngest, the youngest, the youngest among the, the apostles. I'm sure somebody will be able to, to say There it. you go, you guys Already, are going to have to answer. It's Saint John. Saint John. Saint John. Okay. Uh, the evangelist. The evangelist. Not, of course, the, the Baptist. Okay, and, it, and in terms of this, uh, this brilliant facade, is there any kind of fun fact you know about it that many people would not know about? So within this uh, portal, indeed, there are at least two stories uh, which are worth mentioning. First of all, maybe let's go back to the doors themselves. Shall we step back a bit to get the... Yeah, come back with me? To see the, the doors mainly, and specifically the iron sculptures which are sustaining the doors. Those iron structures, structures. Which bits are we looking at here? The the, the iron oh, structure this yeah. of the doors. Okay, no, yep. not the yep, one yep. in front, the one on the doors. Yep. Themselves, they're from the 13th century, which is pretty rare, extremely rare actually, to keep uh, some doors this long and this old. Um, and those ones, according to a legend, a Persian legend, were finished only thanks to the help of the devil. So. I know it's hard to hear something like that, but believe me, this is exactly what the Parisians used to say. And it's been a legend which almost become part of Notre Dame story that those iron structures were finished up by, with the help of the devil. And in reality, what we know is that the manufacturer, the one who built up this iron structure, the forgeron, had to kill himself right after he finished them. Why did he kill himself? Because probably of the fact that he sold his he soul sold to, the devil. to the devil. What do you mean he had to do it? He didn't have to do it. If you sell your soul to the devil, you don't know what you have to do. <laughs> How do you know so much about this selling the soul to the That's devil? That's a legend which comes around 
those doors. Now, let's get uh, in some of the details. Okay, of tell the me sculptures. what's the alternative around. Yeah. Uh, just, just an update on some of these comments. In some countries, everything is fine. In some countries, apparently, it's not fine. So, hopefully. Oh, maybe it's about the reception. Some, <laughs> Katie, yeah, I think you're right. So, it's on their side, not our side. Katie Miller says, uh, did the man uh, the, who did the. The forge, the forger. Yeah. Did he kill himself by jumping off the top? No, no, no. He killed himself a, a few days after, but we didn't. We don't have any details specifically of how he killed himself. Right. Okay. So what do we? What's the detail we're looking so at? So let's here? just look up. Just yeah, up, and that's perfect. Here we can see the entire tympanon part, which is the triangle above the doors, basically, which is divided in three parts. Okay. Three floors, as you can see. Do you mean this bit here? Yeah, th this entire sculpture okay. above the doors. Yeah. It's divided in three ranks, if you want. And no, on those three ranks, there's uh, actually the story of the latch judgment. On the first rank, on the first. The top one or the uh, bottom one? The bottom one. Okay, I'm zooming, yeah. You can see plenty of characters which are raising up of their tombs. They're actually moving up their tombs yeah. because they're resurrecting. This is the resurrection of the dead, wow. a moment which all the Christians are waiting for. This is the end of times. And they're actually <laughs> woke up by two angels playing trumpets. You can see one on, on the, the left. top left yeah, and that. one on the top right too. Now within those characters, you can see a lot of different people, different kind of dignities. You have a king, you have a queen, you have a nun, you have noble man, noble woman, but also peasants, normal people. The entire medieval society is represented, young, old. But if you look very, very close nearby the angel, yeah. zoom in, zoom in, because okay, it's right. worth On the left, yeah. On the left, uh, there. yeah. Have a good look at the angel and just look at the face which is on its right, the little man. Okay. The, the one which is high. Okay. At the level of the of the angel's uh, face. Yeah, I see him. This little guy, I don't, I don't know if everybody can see it, but has... This guy. Yeah. Fat lips, yeah. curly hair. They chose to represent an African man. Wow. We are in Paris, early 13th century. Believe me, that none of the Parisians, or very few of them, could have seen um, an African man in their life. Now, why would they represent him in here? Well, it's kind of a hopeful message. The idea is clearly to represent the universal message of Christianism in here, saying that everybody's called, the entire humanity is called by Jesus or by God for this moment, even the Africans, which at the thir in the 13th century would seem something so exotic, yeah. so foreign, so far away than the Parisian, um, than the Parisian uh, landscape that you can, to me, this is a sign of something very hopeful because you can realize that in the medieval ages, Parisians at least didn't have the same prejudices that later were unfortunately developed. In right. Europe. But at the time, African men were a part of humanity. It was obvious to them since they had to represent them also on the facade of Notre Dame. I've got two questions. Tell me. So the first one is, do you know how many different statues of people there are on this building? No, I never counted. It's something over a hundred, but uh, I won't be... Uh, I don't remind I mean, them. I wouldn't be able to remind you. Second question is, you say it's from 1300, these statues, yeah. right? How did they know to do a statue of my brother? <laughs> Who's your brother? The that devil? <laughs> the devil. It in looks the, suspiciously on, like my brother. On this, uh, on this level, yeah. on the level in the middle, you can see an angel which is holding a balance. Yes. He's basically waiting the, the, uh, the souls of the people to see whether they were good or bad during their lifetime to see whether they got, they're gonna end up in heaven or in hell of course and this angel according to the Christian tradition is supposed to be the Archangel Michael right and in front of him you have a demon which is trying also to pull down as much as he can the souls towards hell and if you take a good look behind the devil you're gonna see a lot of people yeah. which are holding a chain oh yeah I this see is that. a detail worth mentioning also because the fact that they are holding to the chains means they're, that they're holding to their sins. It's all about their choice. So you see, you're not damned to something in the middle right. of ages. I've got, a few, I've got a few questions. If you want. Yes. I've got some questions um, coming in from the audience. And I've got to tell you as well, the idea is we've got to walk and talk sure. as a rule of the walk show. So we've got to start continuing on. Um, but I've got questions for you. Two, one from Katie Miller who says, how do they keep the statues looking so perfect? 
uh, and maybe you can give that a quick answer and then I'll get on to the next one. Notre Dame facade was recently in the early uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2000s uh, restored, cleaned up. Right. And the big statues, we were talking about the apostles earlier, those ones are part of a huge restoration which took place in the 19th century and led by an architect called Eugène Viollet le Duc. We'll talk about, uh, a lot more about Eugène Viollet le Duc. That's funny because a comment just came in from Jim McPherson about Viollet le Duc. Uh, who also adds, Jim says, it doesn't look like there was a lot of damage during the French Revol during the Revolution. So. Big parts were restored. Actually, the original stones that we have from the, the sculptors are kept in museums today. Uh, and it's extremely hard to detail everything, but you have basically big parts. I didn't even show uh, this though. Come with yeah. me. And, and there's a comment that says, whenever you're on camera, they can't hear you. I don't know if that's your voice, but maybe we'll just keep you <laughs> by my side rather than in front, just to be safe. But um, there's so there's three doorways, right? And there are we've three just... doorways, three portals decorated with uh, sculptures. Yes. And someone's saying, Claudine's saying, on the left portal of the Virgin, the top lintel is outlined with straight lines. The others doesn't. Exactly. It's true. Do you know why? There, <laughs> this is one of the most asked questions in. I don't understand it. You have to. You have to Do explain you it to me. You need no. to take some perspective. You see here, there's a point. Oh yeah. Okay, let's go back. Over there, it doesn't exist. Let's walk back and get this whole yeah, thing. Yeah, let's take more perspective. Okay, to see you lead the way. Oh wow, we've got a beautiful sunset going on. Um, and so uh, keep the questions and comments coming in, especially if there's sound issues and stuff like that, because I want to. I want to make sure everyone can see it. I see there's more people watching now than have ever watched a YouTube walk show live, which is an exciting thing. Um, we're, we're making history, Quentin. We got, we got 37 people watching. But so actually, I'm enjoying the fact that we're walking this way because you can see right now on the camera, yeah. you can see two lines which are a bit clearer on both sides, parallels. Okay, what they does that mean? They are showing us the foundations of an old street. Oh, really? This part, this square, used to be constructed there used to be a lot of medieval houses in here this is a very modern square right they uh, destroyed the last parts in the early 20th century but doing some excavations they were able to find the foundations of the old houses and medieval housing and so you mean uh, and this part this was, and a this. was a street right. an open street built up expressively for Notre Dame wow and actually the name of the street was you can show it to everybody okay hold on La guys Rue we're going down Neuve Notre Dame which basically means the new street for Notre Dame. Is it here somewhere that there's like a point that's like the center of Paris? Or exactly, something? it's over there. We'll get back there if we I'll always stay on this we, side. Hang once on. we go back. Okay. So to answer your question, indeed, from this point of view, everybody can see ah. that the three portals are um, uh, underlined differently. Specifically, if you look at the left one, that indeed, one, it looks more, much more pointy. Yes. The, on, the only thing that you, the other, sorry, I'm sorry, my English is far from being Your perfect. English is <laughs> magnificent and uh, everyone's very The other very thing grateful. you can notice from far away is that the left portal is actually much smaller than the right one. Right. They look symmetric, but they're not in reality because simply the floor is not perfectly flat. So they had to arrange themselves. And this pointy sculpture, this pointy stress on this portal has two possible reasons. Right. None of them is sure. One is because it was smaller and they wanted to balance the fact that he was smaller than the other one. So that from far away we don't have this impression. Right. Or maybe another one which is a bit more theological because this is the one where the Virgin, virgin goes up to, to heaven. It's what we call today for the Catholics the Assumption. In reality, this is the moment in which Virgin Mary dies and goes up to heaven. Everybody can hear the bells, right? And while the bells are going off, a comment, John, if you're still there, John D. Murray. Uh, I just want to show what he wrote and see if you understand yeah, yeah, sure. it. He said, he's leaving now, but I'm going to address his question. He said, uh, I think there were heads from the statues taken down during the revolution. Indeed. And then he said, finding the heads was a great story. Hint, hint, Oliver. I think that means there's a good story. But I'm almost certain no one's going to be able to hear us while the bells are going. Yeah. Actually, so this is a good wait. chance to, to pan around and show what Paris looks like right now. I mean, maybe I'll just do the slow pan. So you can gather your thoughts, Quentin. I'll show everyone what we're looking at. And I want to see some questions coming in from uh, everybody that's watching. Because this is... This is a brilliant, a brilliant evening in Paris, and everything's looking fantastic. What are the bells for? Is it? Is it? Is it o'clock? Is it? Is it the time? Oh, I think right now they're announcing. Um, no, no, this is not the clock. 
No, they're announcing the, the beginning of mass. Ah, right, okay. Yeah. When they ring o'clock, they ring six time for 6 p.m. Okay. Whereas right now they're ringing what we call on the fly, à la volée in French, okay. which means they're announcing that you're supposed to come right now because mass is about to start. And Kate, Katie Miller says, how often do the bells ring and who rings them? Today it's automatic. Yeah, it's, so it's just a, a button, like it's yeah, an app. Electronic device. Notre, Dame Notre yeah, Dame Almost an app indeed. Uh, but there's kind of a successor of, uh, of Quasimodo because there's a man in charge of this. Yeah. Uh, and they ring uh, every day, actually, every day, every hour. And they ring on the fly like that, à la volée. À la volée. Yeah. Freely. Um, Is it true that you can say in French, like, uh, someone, like, they left a party I was at the other day and they said, bis à la volée or something like that. Like, Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, you can kind of say that. Uh, it's a way to describe that. So, a comment comes in from Don. Yeah, they can hear me. us talking while the bells are good, so yeah. we can keep going. But it's also Don who can't hear you when you're standing in front of the camera. I'm sorry. So, Don, I don't know how to, I don't know how to solve. But hold we... on, hold on, because if we want to see some details. Yeah. Hello from Cairo. Whoa, Cairo. That's I've cool. been there once. I've never been. Hello, Cairo. Hello, Sue. What's the detail? We can hear you, it's okay. So actually from far away like that, you can see that the, the facade is divided within three parts. Vertically, but also horizontally. You have kind of three floors. Yes, three I see. Three main separations. The idea is to stress on the Trinity, which is of course a Christian and a Catholic belief. But also, if we look into the details, I think everybody can see this gallery of kings. And I'm gonna go within the story that I don't know who was mentioning this? just earlier. Exactly, this yep. gallery of it was, uh, it was It was John D. Murray. John D. Murray. He's, okay. a, he's a regular I'll watcher. I'll answer and I'll complete exactly what you uh, started to tell us. Should we zoom this in or should we kings, go closer? No, for the moment, not, okay. let, let's not zoom. Oh. Let's have a look at them. Okay. And uh, this gallery of kings are not the original kings because indeed during the French Revolution those kings were completely destroyed. But there was a story the people of Paris would say that before they were completely destroyed, they first beheaded, very net, all the heads of the kings. So they, they as if they were the kings of France. Right. And during a long time, this was just a theory because we had no way to prove that. We had completely lost the original statues up until in the 1970s. Exactly, I think it was 1974. There were some construction under a building in Paris, further away than here, in the 17th district, right. arrondissement. Uh, they were actually building, building up a parking under a bank. Very basic. Right. But this uh, building was an old uh, private residence of a noble man in Paris. And guess what they discovered doing the excavations for the parking? They found some of the original king's heads. Okay. And we could definitely be sure this time that they were beheaded because we could see the cut was very precise, was very defined, uh, which means that in reality, yes, they were first beheaded and this noble man, maybe out of respect, maybe out of cult, decided to take them with him and to save them, burying them under his house. It's a bit crazy and today if you ever come in Paris, you can see the original heads. They are in the medieval museum of Paris, which is not far from Notre Dame. It's called L'Hôtel de Cluny, a bit further that away, way. crossing the river. Okay. Now, actually let's zoom in within this gallery because there's a guy I want to introduce you. As I told you, those... Where, where am I looking here? Exactly, to the left, zoom in, zoom in, and everybody can count down from the left. Okay. Count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, and the got eighth him. king is a self-portrait of Eugène Violet le Duc. Oh. Eugène Violet le Duc is the architect who was in charge of the restoration of Notre Dame in the 1840s, and he decided to put his own face on one of the new kings. And just so you, so you believe me, <laughs> have a look at his picture at there his he photo. is yeah I can kind of see it and you can kind of compare we can so he <laughs> with this little curly hair over there so he based one of the king's heads on his own head and he did much more than that because he actually represented himself three times throughout the restorations that's a bit excessive Eugene oh he big ego but he deserved it somehow he's kind of one of the first architects who invented restoration right in France at the time in which we were pretty much destroying everything that was part of French legacy because of civil wars, revolutions, 
This is a. Uh, I've talked about him when I went to Carcassonne. Indeed. I was. Uh, we can put the camera on us for a bit. Sure. Here we are. In I case you're just tuning I'm in. To look right I, there, I, I never know. Look, 38 <laughs> people are watching, which is an Eiffel Tower record. Uh, really? Yeah. Well, I've only been doing them live on YouTube since yesterday. So. <laughs> uh, but what, the one thing I want to say before we get on to Carcassonne is, if you think this video is fun, we're about to walk around the whole thing. Send it to one of your friends. Tell them to watch. We're going to be walking the whole lap, right? Go ahead. Um, but when I went down to Carcassonne, I was fascinated by, uh, I call him Eugene, I know his name is actually Eugene. Eugene Viollet-le-Duc. Eugene Emmanuel Viollet-le-Duc. His real complete name is very long. Because he basically re he fixed Carcassonne, the, the medieval the and city. so much more and than so much Carcassonne. More. Carcassonne, indeed, he resurrected a medieval city in Paris in a way which is extremely impressive. But if you ever come in Paris, nearby Paris, there's another castle at the north of Paris, which is called Pierrefonds, which is a fantastic medieval castle if you take a look at it today. But if you ever take a look at the pictures just before the restoration, you would think this room became that really? castle. You couldn't believe it. He was like the property brothers in America, fixing up property rentals for TV. Somehow. Except there was no TV. He also did Mont Saint Michel a little bit, yeah. I think. Mm. That's one of the only he things. He worked almost everywhere. Actually, I wanted to show you the zero point. It's right there. Okay, That's I'm turning the camera around. We're following. Lead the way. Okay. Someone, sta someone standing in the center of Paris. <laughs> Uh, Earlier we were talking about that. This is what the French call le point zero, point zero, because in the in the in the eighteenth century. Stay on my right hand side. Hang on. Okay. Oh, yeah, for the go. mic. Sorry. Yes. In the eighteenth century, French administration started to try to calculate the distances between the cities in Paris. Right. And it all started in here. The zero point for all the kilometers ground was taken zero. from here. Right. Kind of ground zero. So what exactly. does it say on it? It says here. Des routes de, de it says point, point zero. Okay, we'll uh, walk around this. Point us. zero des routes de France. Okay. The first is here. Your French accent zero. is much better than mine. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Point, point zero, zero des routes de France. Des routes de France. And Don, who's having the hearing troubles, and Don, it could it could be you, Don, that has the hearing problems, <laughs> uh, stood here in 2017. He was here. Oh, really? Welcome back, Don. Uh, where are we going? Let's walk a bit. Do you think, though, I got a question. Do you think that there's someone has some kind of key that they can put in this and twist it and no. it opens up to the underworld? <laughs> no? We, okay. We could try one day. I'm not sure. <laughs> we need to walk, otherwise it's going to get dark. Is it? Maybe we can uh, finish uh, with your last favorite story about the facade before we go around. And hello, Linda, in New York City. Wow, look at the light! Have you got a camera? You need to take a picture of yeah, this. Yeah, the, 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 the light is wonderful. Take right a now. picture, take a picture. Actually, about the facade, there's a lot of people wondering where would Quasimodo live? Of That's course. funny that you say that because Katie Miller just asked that and I forgot <laughs> to pass it on. She said, do you have any fun Quasimodo stories? The, actually, uh, I'm going to disappoint a lot of you probably, but you need to know that Quasimodo never existed, okay? Uh, Sorry, Katie. <laughs> the entire history of the Hunchback of Notre Dame, Disney one or the original one, which is Notre Dame de Paris, a book written by Victor Hugo in 1831, is based on his imagination. And that's it. He just got inspired and tried to make a medieval Paris relief in front of us with this story of Quasimodo being left in front of the cathedral and then raised up um, by, um, by Frodo. But Frodo? Yeah, it's Frodo. Frodo. No, it's, it's no Frollo, sorry. Uh, you went Lord of the Rings for a second. <laughs> Frollo, of course. Uh, it's Frollo in, um, in French. Anyway, uh, this whole story is out of his imagination, okay? So there was nobody living up here. But actually, a fact worth mentioning, maybe among you, there are some people speaking some French. And you might be happy to learn one more word of French, which is clochard. A uh, clochard is a word that we use, kind of slang language, to talk about homeless people in the right. streets. I thought clochard. It was a drunk person. Homeless. No, right. no, really for homeless people clochard. in the streets. Okay. Uh, clochard. Uh, clochard has, has, carries exactly the same sound as cloche, the bells. Why? Because, and here again we have a word coming from Notre Dame in French, because in the, in the medieval ages the bells all the way up to the towers at the time in order to activate them even though if today it's electronical at the time you would need a lot of people to make it work for example the biggest one had uh, you needed 
eight different people just to be able to activate it right because it was so heavy over 14 tons so um, they would go down around the street and ask to any homeless or poor people if they wanted to go up just for a few minutes to ring the bells and they would get paid with like you know some boxes a really? few coins and that's so they, it they just got the and homeless people to since do. the name and today every frenchman know clochard word but very few know the origin of it <laughs> well now we all know um i i want to uh before now and now we have to get walking because it's a rule of it's called a walk show it's like a talk show but you walk let's walk around and we've been doing a lot of standing still yeah sure but that's okay that's okay there's wanna... so many things to say about the facade already um I'm turning the camera around because we'll have one last look at this beautiful facade. But I've got a question, and I've seen a lot of comments coming in. I'm going to read through them in a second. Tell me. But I've got a question first from myself. Yeah. Um, someone told me the books like, uh, n n let's walk. Yeah. A book. Oh wow. And we then... might. Yeah. Have a look over there. And besides, actually, over there, there's something interesting. Maybe you can zoom in on the spire, this tower, which is standing out that behind one? the building. Yep. You see the three-color building, mm -hmm. which is the actually the police department of Paris. Not right. very attractive or anything. But behind, you can see a pointy tower. Yep. This is what we call a spire, which is the highest tower of a church. And in this case, we're talking about La Sainte Chapelle, the Holy Chapel, which have a history which is connected to Notre Dame since La Sainte Chapelle was built up in the 13th century after Notre Dame in order to accommodate the patient relics which are today in Notre Dame, among which the Holy Crown of Thorns. Ah. That's a long story. We could go in detail. We'll save that for next time. But <laughs> I just noticed another famous monument. If you walk with me over here, uh, even you guys who don't know Paris at all Everybody who are watching. Everybody can guess what's pointing I, out. I won't, I won't reveal it. I'll see if the zoom can do it. I'm going to jump up on this thing. <sighs> okay, let's see. First person to comment what I'm zooming in on wins. What do you win? You'll have to find out by commenting. Can you see that? It looks rather like an antenna, uh, but it's not an antenna. Eiffel, Michael Shaw wins. You're exactly right, Michael. Well, oh, I should have zoomed out before I jumped. The Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Cindy Owen says it's the Eiffel Tower. Oh, Cindy. <laughs> I'm thinking that maybe we should better walk this way to have an overview and okay. specifically to see Notre Dame Spire instead. Okay. Uh, Michael Shaw, who won the prize of saying Eiffel Tower first, wonders if his prize is a free trip to Paris. <laughs> if you live in the suburbs of Paris, I will buy you a train ticket in here. <laughs> but otherwise, no. No, I'm afraid not. Hey, guess how many people are watching? Half 48. No 48, that's pretty much. Okay, we got a comment from Mary. Hello, Mary. She says, the last time I stood there was on the morning of the Paris attacks. There were oh many my. armed guards. Yeah, I enjoyed I a cup that. of coffee. A sweet moment. Maybe we cross each other because I was here that day too. Oy. Kind of scary. Very scary moment that we try to forget today. Actually, I wanted you guys to see, to walk over this bridge, to have a different point of view over the, over the cathedral. The light is so good. We picked the perfect, the we gotta perfect show the, we'll show the, this side yeah, first. Yeah, you need to see La, La Seine, the river. God, how nice that we can share this with 48 people around the world. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. And I hope you're telling your friends too, because we've still got a fair bit to walk, I think, no? This is gonna take us at least another, what? At least, at least another 15 minutes, minimum. Uh, so there you go, there's the view. And then the view that obviously uh, Quentin is here to show is behind, and I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> what, you switch, switch to, there you go. And there you go, now you have a, a different point of view on Notre Dame. You see it from the um, side to change from the facade, and as you can see, the sides are very different. You can see the flying buttresses coming out of the church. What does that mean, buttresses? Is that a these buttress bits? is basically those thick walls coming out of right. the church. Uh, which are just here to sustain the weight of the framework and to light up the walls ah, yes. in order to build within big um, stained glass and big windows, like the one we see here, actually. Is this, a, this is quite a famous window, isn't it? Indeed. This, Indeed. The big one up on the side. Yeah, so exactly. we go over here. And yeah, yeah, let's walk a bit further away here so you can see it entirely. Deborah Ball says it's gorgeous. But she maybe was talking about when the camera was on us. <laughs> I don't know what, where are you. Well, I don't know what she. I don't know what time it came through. Okay, so here's. You got to answer now. <laughs> yeah, Deborah, let us know what you're talking about. I think.
think she meant <laughs> the cathedral. Uh, now everybody can see this part which is standing out a bit of the building yep. with the big rose window. This is what we call the transept uh, architecture talking. And the rose window which is within is the south rose window. There are actually three rose windows. The one we saw on the facade, this one and one uh, in front. Um, maybe another day for an another life we'll see uh, the interiors of, of Notre Dame, and you'll see the colors of the stained glasses. Does the Wi Fi, which... does the internet work in there? Wi Fi doesn't much. <laughs> Most people go to church to connect with God, not the internet, <laughs> in right? Exactly. <laughs> Different kind of reception. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but look up also to the spire. So the, the spire you can see above is not medieval. I'm going to disappoint some of you again because the original one had to be destroyed just a few years before the revolution because of a storm. It was kind of moving and threatening to collapse so yeah. they had to remove it and a few years later Eugène Viollet le duc again came him. along and decided to build up a brand new spire and, and wasn't there controversy there's controversy huge controversy right. and actually if you look in uh, some old newspaper you might be able to fell upon some caricatures of um, Violet Le Duc with a huge, 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 huge spire and a small, small, small cathedral. I'm gonna, wait, I'm going to film you again just to stop you, <laughs> but just speak loudly because the light's so nice okay. and, and just keep your voice up because we'll it's give it true. a shot. It's true, the, the, the light is so beautiful. And the tourists have gone now a little bit, so we can hear you, I think. But tell, so continue, there were caricatures in the paper. Yeah, indeed, in which Violet Le Duc was uh, standing on top of Notre Dame that he was restoring with a very, very, very big and tall pointy tower, this one, and a very, very small cathedral, because indeed he was building up a, a spire, this tower, much higher than the old one, and everybody knew that, but he was so proud of it, he wanted the highest one possible. Keep in, keep in mind that at the time, the Eiffel Tower didn't exist. Well, hang on, people are waving at us. Let's wave Let's them See if we can get them to wave back at us. <laughs> they lost interest. Sorry, live video, we're gonna go with it. Hang on, you're, you've just changed in color because... Yeah, I'm green because the, uh, the public... Why do they look like that? Public light. It's just the time, it takes a few a few minutes look, and then just, it's gonna turn. Just look at how beautiful this is. Like just, I mean, this is incredible. Are you kidding me? Someone had a question, Jim McPherson. I think I cut you off whatever you're saying. Tell me. Um, but a question about the house there. Is it for the bishop, said Jim McPherson? Not for the bishop, but you're not far from here. It's for, originally, for the rector of Notre Dame. The rector being the archie uh, priest of Notre Dame, which is different than the bishop. Indeed, Notre Dame is a cathedral, so there's a bishop in it. But the bishop doesn't live here anymore, and he didn't live here back then. There was actually another huge building which was destroyed during the French Revolution. But this building up here was built up once again by the Jean-Pierre Le Duc. Uh, it's called a presbyter, which is basically the house for the priests, the main important priest that would live nearby the cathedral and that would celebrate all the offices every day, the one that had to be nearby. And today, to be honest, this is mainly the, the offices of the church. We've got, uh, we've got very interesting. I'm, uh, I'm reading questions as they're coming through. Yeah, tell me. What I'm going to do as well, oh, look, at, look at the light in our eyes. I'm going to also say, uh, just pause for a second to say that because people are tuning in that missed the start or don't know what they're watching. Uh, I'm here with Quentin Henrique, who is a, a, tour, a tour guide and uh, works specifically showing the inside of Notre Dame when it's closed with a company called Secret Journeys. Uh, and all these links, I've already put them down below in the description. So you guys can go check that while we're talking or after we're talking. And uh, just a note, we're going to continue, but I just figure people are tuning in. This is... Uh, I'm Doing a walk every day at all every day of the week, the seven wonders of Paris. This is wonder number two, and I'm going to do the Eiffel Tower. Everything's in the links below, so get sharing and looking and watching, and uh, and we'll keep going. But I had a question for you that's a bit different that you didn't expect. Imagine if you're time traveling. Uh, oh, and by the way, I forgot to add, we're at Notre Dame Cathedral. In case you didn't figure that one out, well, you never know. We never do. So here's your question, Quentin. Uh, if you are time traveling, or better still. Violet Le Duc is time traveling and he arrives in Paris and he says I want to have a coffee with you so you're sitting down having a coffee with him <laughs> what would you want to know from him from Violet Le Duc yeah, what would you ask him and he says he says he says Quentin you can only ask me one question and then I have to time travel back what would you ask 
Only one question. That's it's very, very hard because I have tons of questions for him, specifically on Notre Dame. And he says, Conta, I have no time! One question! I have one question, but it's more about the interiors of the cathedral. He changed some, something by the organ. Uh, he changed completely the organ of Notre Dame and he actually destroyed one part of the original organ. And I would wonder, and I, I'm really wondering why he did that. And I would ask him that. Why did you get rid of this lower part of the great organ? I'm really wondering about that. This really? is the main, in, the, the main question I would have. The first one that pops in mind, actually. I like <laughs> it. That's a, good, that's a good question. I didn't expect you to say that. Uh, but that's good. That's good. If you're watching the <laughs> Island. I don't think he's watching. He could have time traveled just to watch the video. <laughs> okay, let's turn it around. Uh, I've seen more questions that are coming. What do you want to do? Do you want to walk back around the front facade now that it's all lit up, or did you want to continue around? Actually, continuing around is going to be not very easy, except if we go this way. Okay. We do a big tour all around. Okay, let's do it. But what we'll do though, we have to stick by the rule of walk shows. Sure, sure, sure. Which is we walk the whole time now. No more stopping. So any information comes while we're walking. Wonderful. Uh, I see, uh, I think it was... Actually over there to the right, you see a tiny little church. It's one of the oldest one of, in Notre Dame. In, uh, in I'll zoom in. We'll do a rare pause. I don't know if a lot of people can see. It's a tiny little park by Notre Dame, just across the river. Yeah. And this is saint julien le pau a very, very small church, but also a very old one, because it's actually older than Notre Dame. Can we go down here and back we up? We can go down here, yeah. Okay. Um, I, we can't stop and talk about the church because we're, we're walk showing it. Sure, that's but fine. I know that the Have a look also at those boxes up there. Can everybody see those boxes, those green boxes all the way down yes. along the river, along the banks of the river? They're called, maybe you talked about it. In Bouquinistes. The, les Bouquinistes indeed. And here you see the same route. Book. Book. <laughs> in, uh, right. in, uh, Is in that English, where book comes from? Uh, I don't know if you know, but English comes from at least one third of English comes from French language. I'll tell you, Quentin, one of my favorite subjects in the whole world is language. Yeah, it's fascinating. I love, I could talk for hours about language. And you can learn so much from language. <sighs> and you can learn so many languages. <laughs> you know, this is also a beautiful view. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, just absolutely amazing. Look at, you can see all the tourists <laughs> on the boat. None of them are facing us, obviously. With the, with the beautiful... Oh, one guy is. We'll give him a wave. There he is. He waved back. Uh, okay, let's continue. Don says, isn't the oldest tree near that church? Indeed, the oldest trees of Paris from the 17th century. There was a question specifically for you as well, Quentin. And we've got 49 Damn. people watching. That means we need one more to break the 50 record. Someone... I'm sorry, guys. It's hard to answer all the questions at once. Some actually would deserve a bit more explanations. So that's true. That's true. One of the questions I saw pop up was uh, someone said they wanted to see that organ that you talked about. So if anyone can Google that and put a picture in the comment below, that would be really cool so that others can see it. And I'll check it later. Um, but there was a question specifically for you that I saw. Where did you learn all this information content, says Katie. Oh, that's the beginning of, this, of my story with Notre Dame. <laughs> I used to work in Notre Dame. I used to work, at first it was just a student job. This is when, this is, you used to be a homeless person and they pulled you off the street to ring no, the bell. I did, not be, I, I did not become a clochard. I never rang the bells of Notre Dame or anything. But in reality, yes, I, it was six years ago now and I was still doing uh, my studies in La Sorbonne nearby, actually in history. And I uh, decided um, to have a part-time job, uh, mainly for the, for the summer, in Notre Dame. And uh, this is why I ended up in Notre Dame. And at first, I was the guy selling uh, stuff at the shops, book guides, selling the entrances for the treasury of Notre Dame. Other things like that. So, you know, at the front desk, answering to the people, where are the... Where is the access to the towers? Where are the toilets? This is what I did during, during almost four years. Wow. Um, and doing so, I realized that I was not working in any other place, you know? It was not Gram. So I knew that the fact that I was doing this quite boring job uh, was not that painful considering that I was working in Notre Dame. And this is why I started to get interested within the story of the cathedral itself and with my study background of history, it was easy to deep into it. And I loved it so much that later I decided to become a guide tour myself. What, um, what, what uh, let's say tomorrow Notre Dame got, uh, 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 for some reason, vanished. 
and there was no more. I would be devastated. <laughs> I can imagine you would be devastated. I don't even want to imagine this. But you have to for this question, right? <laughs> and so the question is that you have to put all your efforts into a new monument or building in Paris. What would you choose? In Paris? Yeah, it has to be Paris. Maybe I'd say the Invalids. Maybe you heard about the yeah. Invalids. But yeah. this is probably my second most uh, favorite place in Paris. And that's... Uh, uh, now, I don't know much about the, it's the Invalides, but is that the... Uh, uh, the, the, where the soldiers, the, the war? Exactly, Invalids is actually for the war veterans, the That's soldiers, right. the soldiers which were injured during the reign of Louis XIV, the famous one, the one who built up Versailles, and uh, he built up a military hospital for them, a huge one called the, the Invalids. And, and in French today, you say Invalides? Les Invalides, yes. indeed. And today, the Invalids are specifically famous because under the dome of the church, which is a golden dome. So if you ever see an overview of Paris, you're going to recognize it right away. This is the only huge, big, golden, beautiful dome in Paris. And this is where, later in the 19th century, we decided to bury Napoleon. Napoleon. That's a whole nother story. Yeah. I'm liking your answers because you don't have typical answers to the questions. <laughs> you know, most people would, uh, I think a lot of tour guides would say something more famously touristy, you know what I mean? Like the Eiffel Tower or something like that. Hey, oh, nothing yeah. wrong with that. And <laughs> while we were talking, I saw that the, it clicked over to 50 people were watching. Whoa, record. More and more. Wait, we need to show this. Uh, and if you can't hear us because of the traffic, let us know and we'll speak louder. But um, this is a pretty good view. This is one of the most beautiful views. I have a dream is to live up there. <laughs> On to the have this side? view every morning when I wake up I wish I could so you dream about <laughs> Notre Dame as well <laughs> who is the Dame who's the lady oh that's a very good question and a very important one because indeed for you English speakers it's not obvious but Notre Dame in French means our lady and our lady is just a very courteous way of calling in the Medieval Ages the Virgin Mary ah. so you need to imagine the building as the Virgin Mary herself it means that this church was dedicated to her cult. So when, As, sorry. so when did it? When did they start building on it? When did they, they commence? No. When did they commence building on this? Uh, what year did they start building the building? 1163. 1163. Up to the early 13th century. But it's hard to go in details because we don't have a lot of records from the medieval times. You know. Yeah. Specifically for the constructions. Um, Contain, you need to take your camera out and take a picture of us filming. <laughs> Can you do that? Sure. So you take a selfie, or maybe this guy can take a picture of us. Can you ask him? Sure. Because it's uh, we've got to capture this moment. Oh shit, he's talking. Excuse my language. Yeah, sure. Okay, we're getting a picture taken. <laughs> okay, so can you take two pictures? Yes. One with us just smiling. Okay. <laughs> um, we're ready? Okay. I'm going to share this picture with you guys. Uh, there you go. Okay. Uh, and then, and then the other one is of us filming, just a candid shot. Okay, okay. so there you go. Blah 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 blah. Okay, thank you. All right. So sorry, guys, watching at home. I figured it would be nice. Uh, I figured it would be really nice to have a picture to put on uh, Facebook or Instagram to promote this, what we're doing, you know? I got them. Cool, cool. You know, I think because uh, I want people to watch it in the future as well. This will be available on YouTube as a replay. Uh, but you know what, the camera I think is getting quite cold because like some of the buttons have stopped working. I can't <laughs> flip it around anymore. It's too cold now. And I can't see any of the comments anymore. I wonder why. I hope it's still recording. Do you see it's... Yeah. it's what to do? It looks like it's stuck. Do you think it's frozen? What should I do? It could... It's, it's likely that it's still recording, you know?